if I can get to, if I can get home and get this phone plugged in, then we're still in the game. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are reviewing the Blix Ultra. Take a look at this beast, man. It has dual batteries. It's got fat tires. You know what? There's a lot to go over. So let's get into it. The Blix Ultra comes to you as a class two e-bike, meaning that you can do 20 miles an hour via the thumb throttle here on the left-hand side or your five levels of pedal assist. It has a cadence sensor in it and it can be unlocked to class three speeds, which is up to 28 miles an hour via the Blix app. The ideal rider height is gonna be between 5'6 and 6'2. Although the Blix Ultra only comes in one size, it comes in a couple of different configurations. You can get it via single battery mode, right? So they eliminate this battery right here, but you have this one here and it only comes in a bright ultra white. The cost of the single battery mode is $1,849 and that bike weighs 68 pounds. The dual battery version comes in three colors. You have a bright white, you have a slate gray, and this matte green right here. The bike weighs 76 pounds in this double battery configuration and the cost is $2,249. One of the things that they say that the double battery version will do 80 miles in distance on a single battery charge. Both versions of the Blix Ultra has a maximum payload capacity of 400 pounds. And the way they break that down is the back rack area here can hold 150 pounds. And if you get the front rack, it can hold 50 pounds and the rider is 250 pounds. But if you're over 250 and you don't plan on putting 150 pounds here on the back, you're gonna be totally fine. The motor, is a 48 volt 750 watt geared rear hub motor. It has a peak of 1350 watts and 90 Newton meters of torque. It uses a micro shift eight speed transmission with a micro shift derailleur and the micro shift thumb tap trigger shifter, which is a little bit different than the shifters I've used before. For stopping power, the Ultra uses the Zoom hydraulic two piston brakes with 180 millimeter rotors on the front and rear. It comes with an adjustable front fork. Now these are made by Zoom, it's, it's unbranded, it's not on there, but it's a Zoom front fork. It's adjustable, you can lock it out, um, you can change the presets on it, and it has 80 millimeters of play. Along with that, you have these 26 by four inch Chow Yang tires, they're really good. I've had these on multiple bikes. They have an aggressive tread on it, so it's great for off-road and even on-road if you take some of the air out of it. Plus, they're puncture resistant. When it comes to the battery on the Blix Ultra, well, this one up here in the front is a 672 watt hour, 48 volt, 13.6 amp hour battery. Well, so is this one. It just looks totally different. This is also 672 watt hours, 48 volts and 13.6 amps. These batteries do work in conjunction of each other. The charger is a 48 volt, two amp hour battery, which means that it's gonna take a full seven hours to charge this one and seven hours to charge that one. Since this bike has two batteries, both of them are removable. It comes with a set of two keys. To remove the one up here in the front, you're just gonna put the key in the lock. You're gonna turn it and turn it the correct way. And then you're going to turn that little lever and pull the battery out. To put it back in, well, you're just going to slide it in here at the bottom and then click it. When it comes to the second battery, well, you might think it'd probably be hard to get out, but it's not. You're going to use your second key. You're going to unlock it. And then you're just going to lift it up and pull it out. It does have a battery indicator light right here. So if you push it in, as you can see, we have a full charge on this battery. To put it back in, just as simple, you're gonna lift it up in here and then click it in, turn the key, get it right, there we go. And now you're good to go. You don't need to have this rear battery in the bike to ride it. It'll turn on as long as you have this front battery in here. This is just your secondary one so that you can go even farther. I've had this bike for a little bit and I've been riding it around because <laughs> I really like it. But one of the things I want to tell you is when you order the bike, it does not come with this back rack and mesh here on the back. I ordered that separately and it came in. And the reason being is because this bike is very, very modular. You can do all kinds of stuff with the back. You can put a passenger seat back here. Uh, I ended up putting this rack back here because I want to put a basket here on the back and I want to put a basket on the front and try to see if I can build a 26 inch utility bike. 
I also ordered a set of fenders that should be coming in this month as well. Since Blix wanted this bike to be very modular and, and you can set it up however you want, we have different anchoring points here. Uh, this is where I have my foldy lock, so that's why those look different. Over here, you have some spots back here. I mean, there's all kinds of anchoring points for it. If you get the back rack, I mean, it has a bunch of spots there. And here's where behind this plate, and here's where you would mount your front basket. Now, some of the other features that are on this bike is this seat right here. It's pretty cushioned. Now, I have had been riding this bike for a while, so it's a pretty comfortable seat. I haven't done the long distance battery test with it, so I'll, I'll let you know at the end of this ride on how that's gonna go. I do like the fact that it has a handle here in the back. It helps me maneuver the bike whenever it's in the garage. Um, it does have a quick release seat post. We have metal pedals and a quick release on the front wheel. Cockpit operations. On your left hand side here, you have like a softer rubber type grip. It is single locking right here. Um, it is one of my favorite grips that uh, people put on their bikes because it's just very comfortable on the hands. You have your front brake lever right here. Here's your throttle. And believe it or not, here's your controller and display. Everything fits right in between here. Since you can control a lot of features of this bike through the app, I went ahead and I installed my quad lock on here so that the phone mounts strictly right in the middle. We'll see that here in the future when we talk about the app. To turn the bike on, you're just gonna hit the battery button down here. You can hit the one in the front or in the rear. You have your up and down buttons. This gives you your different pedal assist levels. You can change between miles per hour, check out what pedal assist level you're in, SOC, which gives you your total battery percentage, which is crazy because I've charged both of these batteries up all the way and the highest it shows is 97%. Then you have your trip distance, gives you your mileage, and it goes to speed. So it just rotates between those five different things. You can see other stuff in the Blix app. On the right hand side, you have another grip. You have your rear brake lever right here, but this right here, your shifter, normally with trigger shifters, you shift back here and up here. So you, you reduce gears with the thumb and then you bump up gears with your index finger. But with this one, you control both with just your thumb. This one drops a gear, this one adds a gear. You have your gear indicator right here and of course, a bell. This right here, since I have been using the bike, this is for uh, a new light that I've been testing out that I really, really like. This is the Blix app. From here, you can control your lights. When you hit that, it turns them off and on. You can also do that from your controller just by hitting the plus button for a while. And as you can see, it turned the headlight on and turns it off by doing the same thing. Or you can control it by the app here. If you want to change from class two to class three, you're going to hit vehicle, right? Class two, we're like, no, let's go class three. And then we save it. Now the bike will do 28 miles an hour. If you want to track your ride, well, it automatically tracks it when you take off and it's just up to you whether you want to keep it or not. You can put an address in here. If you want to go someplace, it will take you there. So if I put like Union Center, Union Park, yeah, I was it. All right, let's hit that one. It shows you exactly how to get there, tells you your elevation, and it will give you guidance on the way there. You can change from here. You can show either that you want to show the speed that you're doing, or if you want to know what the battery level, if you want to know the battery level of the bike while you're riding, as you can see, it says 97%. We'll probably be using that version today as I want to try to make sure I can get out and get back and still have full power. If you can change your pedal assist also by just hitting this button right here. Right now it's like, okay, we're on pedal assist one. A little two pops up for two, three, four, and five. This bike also has firmware to it. So when I fired this bike up recently, I ended up having to do a firmware update to it. This is where you can get everything like figured out on the bike. You can change your settings here. You can set it for miles and you know temperature wise, it tells you that as well. You can also get support. Uh, easily by just hitting, well, this has your general questions, but you can contact support right here. And this right here will lock the bike. So at this point, like you can't use any of the controls. So you can lock the bike and then like walk away and when you have it stored and then that way if somebody does take it, well, they still can't operate the bike because it's locked. You just can't do anything. So that is a nice little feature to have. The bike does come with a headlight, 
but it does not come with a tail light. Only when you purchase that additional rack that's in the back here does a light come on in the back. Now that light in the back is not a brake light. All right, guys, this is a beautiful day here in Chicago. It's gonna get hot. It's uh, gonna be 88 degrees, and that is pretty hot to be doing a review. So because of that, I'm not wearing my backpack today. I went ahead and put a uh, bag on the back of here to carry my equipment. Right now, I am riding this bike without any power, and we're doing about nine, 10 miles an hour without any power. When it comes to these shifters, well, this one actually reduces the gear. This one increases it. I think I said that backwards in cockpit operations. For this trip, I'll be using the battery percentage. As I mentioned earlier, I have fully charged both of these batteries, but it only shows 97% of, of full. So there's nothing I can do with that reading. So that's how we're gonna be doing the testing today for distance with this 97% reading. Although every indication told me that the two batteries were completely charged. Right, let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist one. We're gonna use throttle only and we're gonna see uh, if it's dictated by whatever pedal assist level that we're in. So we're hitting the speed there. You know what, we'll probably do speed here for a minute. And we are at 20 miles an hour, holding between 20 and like 21. So right in between there. So the throttle is not dictated on what pedal assist level you're on. So you can be in pedal assist level one, and it's going to, which is what we are in, and it's gonna take you to 20 miles an hour. I have unlocked this bike, so it is in a class three mode now, which means it should go up to 28 miles an hour, but it looks like no matter what mode you're in, the throttle is only gonna do 20. Now we're gonna do the pedal assist level test. I have it in pedal assist level one. We're gonna see how fast we're gonna be able to go uh, in each one of these pedal assist levels with the bike being unlocked to class three. And it looks like pedal assist level one, your average speed is gonna be about nine miles an hour. Pedal assist level two, goes a little bit faster. All right, you're gonna be able to comfortably cruise at 17 miles an hour in pedal assist two. Oh, we gotta kick up some gears here. There we go, oh, let's get it all the way up to eight. Oh, that's nice. I love eight speeds on a bike. And this feels really good. All right, let's go to jump to pedal assist level three. There we go. Pedal assist level three looks like uh, 23 miles an hour. Pedal assist level four. Now here's the thing, I can either change it, the pedal assist level here, or I can do it by just hitting this little guy on the bike down below here. And we just went into pedal assist level four. 26 miles an hour in pedal assist level four. Let's go to five. Let's see how fast this bike does go. All right, so 28 miles an hour. I feel it's locking out at that. That's gonna be the max, but ooh, this thing, it feels good. This thing is geared nicely. We are gonna do the speedometer test. Not sure if you can see this. Let me point that down at an angle. Um, so this is my speedometer, but it also tells me the speed right here. And we are gonna see if they match up. So let's go. If you look at this and that, you can see that they are both rocking the same speed. So now we know that your display and your speed is accurate. Now we're gonna do the zero to 20 throttle only test. We're doing it for speed. We're gonna see how fast it, this bike goes. I mean, it does have a lot of torque. Let's go, uh, let's go. Ten seconds. This bike is fast. Now we're gonna go ahead and see how fast it takes us from zero to 20 using pedal assist. I dropped it down to like gear six or five. I think I'm in five. So let's see how long it takes. Let's go. Oh, to make it easier to crank. Oh, I probably should have dropped it down into a lower gear. We are moving already. Boom, that was 20. We hit 20 miles an hour at like nine seconds. Now we're gonna do the zero to top speed, which is 28 miles an hour. I'm gonna use my throttle, I'm gonna use pedal assist, and we're gonna see how long it takes, so let's go. She's fast. Boom, right there, like 12, 13 seconds. This bike is fast, and it is geared correctly. This bike feels great to ride. 
let's talk size and fit. Now this is a long bike. This bike is 78 inches from tire to tire, but it doesn't feel like it's a long bike because this area right here is normal bike length while they have extended this part out. Now, if you put it on the shortest setting right here, well, that gives you an idea on how low that can go. That is crazy low. Uh, the, this, the stem is not adjustable, so it stays a certain way. And then let's see what the tallest part is, right? Oh, there we go. And that is what the highest point of the seat would be. Let's go ahead and put it back down to where I had it. All right, right there. So when you're sitting on the bike, right? Ooh. you're still close to uh, the handlebar area. So you don't, you're not stretched out really far. Uh, matter of fact, I ended up moving the seat on the post back just a little bit uh, as the way I have it set up. Now, I do like the fact that they did add this like not a really a step through part, but they did make it lower to make it easier to get on and off the bike, especially when you have stuff on the back here. As you can see, I have my Brock Bros bag on the back. Now getting this in the garage, these handlebar areas, these are not as wide as uh, normal bikes. Or a matter of fact, these are only like 26 and a half inches or something, I don't know, it'll, it'll show up right there. And yeah, this is how you get it in the garage. All right, like I said, 78 inches, so it's higher than I am, but luckily I am able to see through this thing. So let's go ahead, get on the road and get some more testing done. This is the first time that I'm actually using this app besides just changing it from class two to class three. Uh, so we're gonna see how accurate that is today. I also have Strava going, which has saved me a couple of times. So I'm trying to see how far this bike will actually go I mean, I, I have a feeling I'm gonna be on this for quite a while, and because of that, we're definitely gonna be testing out this seat today to see if it's gonna make the distance. But I know these grips, uh, I love these grips. These brake handles, or the brake levers, uh, they're one finger, right? So I just keep my little index finger over them. And, uh, and the shifter is super convenient. All right, here we go. Let's get a little off-roading. See how she does there. I mean, I know this bike's gonna do excellent off-road. I could just tell when I very first got on this bike. But yeah, we are just, we are just tearing it up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, this bike is a good time. This is a quality bike. You know, some bikes you can tell like when you just start riding them, whether they're gonna be like really nice quality or not. And this one, this one definitely is. It is now time for the hill test. Here we are at my favorite hill. We're gonna try it with throttle only. We know that it doesn't matter what pedal assist level I'm in, throttle is only gonna take me up to 20 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and give her a shot. Ooh, it kind of shudders a little bit when I took off. But just as expected, yeah, this thing is just gonna power up these hills got a couple little girls right here and we're gonna make it we're gonna make it hello yep i didn't figure it would be an issue uh, with this thing climbing especially with the you know 90 newton meters of torque the 1350 max peak power i mean yeah this thing is a unit actually we're going to try something else here what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it down into let's see Oh, oh, oh no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We've gone 3.7 miles, 48 miles an hour. I don't think that's correct. <laughs> See, no, I don't want to cancel it yet. Did I just cancel the whole trip? Oh gosh, I canceled the trip. Luckily we have Strava. Um, I was just gonna switch it because I want to see if, um, which I'm sure it can, if I put it into class two, if it's still gonna give me the same amount of power to make it up this hill. So let's go ahead and find out. Yeah, now we're in class two and it is just, it's the same amount of power uh, going up as I figured it would be, but I just wanted to check it out to see if I was right. But let's go ahead and test out the walk mode on this bike and that should be activated by just hitting this down, uh, the down button for like two, three seconds. And then, yep, it had the little indicator and we are walking and we are walking 
and the bike handles at two miles an hour. So we're heading over to do the brake test and just riding this bike is a pleasure. I think this has just become like one of my favorite uh, bikes. You know, the other times that I've ridden it, I haven't ridden it that far. It was just like to run some quick errands and also to take it to the bike shop to make sure everything is aligned. You know, I do that with every bike that I get. Even though I put it together, I take it to a bike shop to ensure that it's all set up correctly. But there's just something about how this bike rides and how it feels that makes it a pleasure. I mean, basically the bike is 2300 with having both batteries in it, but it, you know, I, I feel like it's worth the money. And I haven't even finished this review yet, so we still have a lot to do, you know, especially with the long distance test. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out today. Now here's a way that you can tell whether a bike is quality or not by just taking your hands off. I mean, it is no issue at all. So right now we're gonna head to do some distance. Uh, we're gonna put some miles on this bike, see if we can uh, wear the battery down some. Plus where I normally do my brake tests, well, uh, they're doing like road construction right there and it looks terrible. So I'm not gonna do it there. We'll find a place on the route that we can go ahead and test out these brakes. What a great day to be riding a bike. All right, we're gonna do a quick mileage check here. We're at 84% battery power. And then we want Strava. And it shows that we are at 9.86 miles. All right, let's continue on. Gear eight on this bike is just excellent. I mean, they have absolutely nailed the gearing on this bike. Now, if you're looking to use the Blix app to track one of your trips, you know, I stopped for lunch and when I did, it obviously disconnected from the bike and then now it had to reset all over again. So if you decide that you wanna track a trip, you're gonna to have to use like Strava or something like that that won't reset the moment you uh, disconnect from the bike. Now, I also don't expect this bike to get 80 miles today. I mean, I'm sure that when they put on the website how far it'll go, I'm sure they had a 60 pound rider on flatland in class two. Well, I'm a 220 pound rider. I've been hitting hills and we have it in class three. I don't expect to get 80, but I do expect this bike to get one of the higher distances just because of how well this bike is made. And here we are on a Monday afternoon at my favorite area in Chicago which is Lakeshore Drive, just because it is so beautiful. And you're right here by the lake. Oh, which we are also in class two. So I forgot about that. Every time you turn the bike off and turn it back on, you are gonna have to go back and re put it back into class three. Which is kind of a bummer because when you save it, it would be great if it was just automatically always in class three unless you changed it. We are just cruising at 28 miles an hour and this bike, I can't tell you how excellent this bike feels. It really does. I believe it's probably the best uh, cadence double battery bike that I have uh, ever reviewed. Brakes feel excellent. Gearing is spot on. Well done, Blix. Well done. Look at that. Look at the marina. Bunch of beautiful boats out here. Come on, people. Chicago's awesome because of the gearing on this bike, this is probably the easiest one to maintain 28 miles an hour. It's insane. We are here to do the brake test, so let's go. I'm gonna go as fast as I can. You know, I only have a 25 foot tape measure and I'm pretty sure that it's gonna go past 25 feet. I mean, these brakes are excellent, but you put all this weight on there and it's heavy. Ooh, I knew we'd go past 25 feet. So let's see what we're actually at. We were at 28 miles an hour too when we did this. 41, like 41 and a half. Huh. All right, let's do it again. Break test number two. Let's go. We're at 28 again. Oh yeah, I really put on it that time. So we're at 40. The other one was 41, but I felt more confident hitting the brakes the second time. 
Then I did the first. I mean, it's quality, guys. I mean, it stops as fast as it can. I felt totally in control. The brakes felt excellent. Now, there are a lot of things that I love about this bike, but I want to show you this one thing, and I haven't seen it on any other bike, but it's the underneath where all the wiring goes. Let me see if I can uh, take this off and show you. Look, you see this right here, like how there's nothing really protecting these wires, and then it, and then it has like this shrink wrap, and then um, that's your, there's your controller right there. I'm, I'm kind of concerned because I do want to take this on a mountain bike trail and I'm like, oh gosh, is this going to eat things up? But I do believe this is going to protect me or protect them if I end up getting stuck going over a log or something like that. I'm just showing this to you. I, you know, everything else seems so well designed and then you see this part and you're like, could they not have made like a bracket that went through there and covered it up? Maybe somebody with a 3D printer can. While we're at it, we might as well take a look at where we're at. We're at 50. 56% battery power. Strava says we've done 21.34 miles. Okay, so that means we should possibly get another 21 miles out of it, out of this thing before it runs out. But you guys know that when I review these bikes, most of the time when they drop down in battery level, the, the performance obviously starts to diminish a lot. So we're gonna see what happens. Uh, I think I might turn around at maybe 40% battery power. Guys, check this out. No other bike have I taken it this far from Chicago, especially during a review. And it shows we have 49%. Uh, that's, we're, we're gonna start heading back because I feel like I'm so far away. And then let's see, we're 25 miles. That's what Strava says. So yeah, look at this place. This is freaking awesome. But I'm also feeling kind of sketch on how far away that I am from home. So yeah, we're gonna start heading back just so I can feel a little bit safer about it. Yeah, what a great day. Man, this is so much fun. All right, let's go. All right, let, let's take a look at where we are. We are at 34.7 miles. We have 31% battery power left. I have 10% phone power left, and there is no USB port to put this into to charge it. So I'm gonna try to race home and get my power bank and get this thing plugged in and continue the mileage. Don't know if I'm gonna make it. If this thing runs out, I don't know what I'm gonna do at that point to help uh, track the mileage. But uh, yeah, let's, let's get going home so I can uh, hopefully make it in time so I can plug this thing in and get some juice going to it. We are at 27% battery power. I have 4% on my phone. Um, I can tell the bike doesn't have as much power as it used to, so it's starting to degrade on that. I'm probably a good still four miles from the house. <laughs> We're gonna, it's gonna be close. I might run out of both at the same time. All right, I am back on the 606 trail. I'm at the very end. I'm 3.3 miles from home. We have 27% battery power. Let's see what Strava says we're at. 37.60, so 37 miles, 0.6. And that way if, and we have 5% battery power. That way if we do run out, I have a unit of measure and I'll be able to figure out how much farther it was so I can do the math. All right, let's pull up over here. We're gonna see. Surely this thing wouldn't cut off with 20%. You know, I had this happen a little bit ago. I turned it off and turned it back on the bike and I got the power back right now. It's showing 24%. Let me shut the battery off. I'm going to turn it back on. All right, we're getting power. We are now in class two. I mean, think about it. I've done most of this trip. Once I got done with the testing part, I've done most of the trip in 28 miles an hour. Bike's starting to feel heavy. So I kicked it down into gear seven and now we feel good. We got 3% left on my phone. We just did 40 miles, which is awesome. We still have 90% battery power left. Whew, that wind is killing it. When it comes to these companies claims on how far it can go, I always expect to get like half of what they say it'll do. 
just because, you know, my weight, the way I'm riding it, you know, just having it unlocked and just flying as fast as you can. And we've already surpassed that with this bike. So that's awesome. Whew, 1%. We made it. We're gonna let this charge for a little bit and then we're gonna go out and finish filming. I have made it back. Today we have done 42.62 miles on this double battery beast. I love everything about this bike. This bike is set up so nice. The gearing, spot on, right? The brakes, great. I love how they feel. It's even one finger uh, to, to use them. Uh, it would have been nice if they would have put, like, since they do have this light here on the back, if this would have been a brake light, if it would have had the brake light functionality, that would have been super nice. But to me, that's the only thing that I see that this bike is missing. I mean, I love the minimalistic part about it. The fact that it doesn't have a display, you know, using my little quad lock thing right there for the phone makes it super nice. Oh, well, the app, the app, you know, what are you gonna do, right? Like, I'm, I'm not really sure how you track and save your trips because it doesn't do it if you just get disconnected from the bike. So I'm probably gonna have to take a deeper dive into that, which is fine because you're gonna see me in this bike on some more videos. I definitely wanna take this out to a mountain bike trail and see how it does. That's gonna be totally fun. I am gonna leave it like this because this will help protect stuff going into the tire. So I, I like that netting. That is a great, a great thing. I'm also gonna be setting up different baskets for it because I wanna see if I can turn this thing in, into a 26 inch utility bike. It might be a little bit hard with this getting over this top bar since we do have this one. I mean, if it didn't have one and they just had a full step through, right, probably easier, but this is the Blix Ultra, right? It's made to do all kinds of different things. So I'm gonna be doing these videos to see what all kinds of different things that it can do. So if you are interested in the Blix Ultra, well, go ahead, click my link down below. That's gonna take you exactly where you're gonna to need to be. Also, if there's any sales or specials going on with this bike, well, that's where you're gonna to have to go to find it. If you are interested in any of the accessories that I have used today, well, no problem. I'm gonna put them all in the description as well. I really appreciate you guys coming along with me today. And until I see you again, enjoy the ride.